Hey guys, what's up? Queenie K here. Welcome back to my channel. So today's video is going to be all about natural hair myths or things that I believe do not work or that you shouldn't go waste your time trying to follow or listen to. Um, I'm just going to go through eight things on my list that I feel like are just complete myths that you shouldn't even bother wasting your time with. Okay, so the first one, I feel like for me, this is a personal opinion. Um, people always say that you shouldn't moisturize your hair daily, which I think is complete BS on in my opinion because I have very dry hair and if you're moisturizing your hair with super light um, Moisturizers like water or um, aloe vera juice or leave-in conditioners that's in a spray bottle anything like that They don't cause a lot of buildup. So if you need to do that, don't feel like You're gonna clog your pores. You're gonna create too much buildup because you have control over when you wash your hair when you co-wash, when you add more product. So if you do have to moisturize your hair every single day because that is your hair type, then you can do that. So I never feel like I shouldn't moisturize my hair every single day because why not? But then again, I don't like to use super heavy products anyway, so it kind of balances out, you know? But it's all preference, it all depends on your hair. So don't try, don't listen to rules that don't really specify on your hair type. And if you know your hair, you know what it can take and what it can't. Okay, so the second myth I want to talk about is trimming your hair makes it grow, which is a complete lie. Um, trimming your hair doesn't make it grow any faster than it originally would, but it does help you retain length. So if you have split ends and they are growing up your hair, basically like starting at the bottom, and they're growing up and you don't cut them off, they will continue to grow and that piece will eventually break off at the like at the split, I guess, if that makes sense. So trimming your hair isn't going to make your hair grow faster, but it will help you retain length. So you can get rid of all the split ends, so then that that minimizes the breakage. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. Okay, so the third thing I wanna talk about is how people assume that you shouldn't wash your hair often or that shampoo is bad for your hair or for your natural hair. So, okay, so actually washing your hair regularly does help unclog pores and it does help with product buildup so you should be washing your hair at least once a week probably not every day because you don't want to strip your hair of all the oils all the time but you can shampoo once a week and co-wash the middle of the week if you need to but don't feel like you have to go like two three weeks without washing your hair because it's bad for you or shampoo um, causes breakage or strips your hair too much if the shampoo is too strong you can always go for a shampoo that's sulfate free or shampoo that's just um, more gentle on your hair so you can choose what kind of shampoo you use you can make your own if you want to or you can just use conditioners and co-wash so it's completely up to you when you want to wash your hair and what you use to wash your hair but please like it is important to wash your hair every week because think about all the stuff that you're putting in it what is clogging your, your um, scalp pores and all the environmental stuff so it's not just product that you're putting in but think about the stuff when you go outside there's dust in your hair dirt like things in the summer like there's a lot of stuff going on so you always have to keep it clean so it's um, your scalp is open and not clogged so then your hair can grow and flourish and all of that so don't be scared of shampoo and don't be scared to wash your hair every single week because it definitely is needed especially if you are wearing your natural hair out and you're styling it um, and just having it out in the air so that's just something we need to do and not be too afraid of Okay, so the fourth thing I want to talk about is protective styling and specifically braids. People seem to think that braiding your hair is the best protective style in the world and I completely disagree because it depends how you braid it. For me personally, I do not like to braid my hair too much and I'm talking about like box braids and like just like single braids. Um, I do not like to braid my hair too much because of the weight and the tension that is like put on my hair and the feeling of the synthetic hair rubbing it up against mine, it creates a lot, a lot, a lot of damage for me. So I do not find that braiding your hair is, is the most protective style. I think that if you're going to do a protective style, you should try to stay away from even adding synthetic hair to yours. And if you do do that, kind of know how to treat your hair in a way that it won't create too much friction. So if you go to someone who can braid really well, they'll be able to tuck your hair in a way that it won't be creating too much friction, if that makes sense. So if you do want a protective style your hair all the time, try to think of protective styles you can do with your own hair and protective styles that are light and aren't too tight on your edges, aren't too tight anywhere, that you don't have to comb your hair too much to get it into, that you don't have to restyle every single day, and that you don't have to add too many products to keep it fresh, if that makes sense. So if you're gonna do protective style, you can always do twist outs, 
or sorry no not twist outs you can twist your hair into like certain styles you can use braids and cornrows with your own hair if you don't want to use your own hair to do a protective style you can add clip-ins which are human hair to create some sort of cute style you know so it kind of feels a lot like I feel like it's a lot easier on your hair than the synthetic hair so that's something I try to keep in mind it's not just <laughs> box braids and tight cornrows that are the best for your hair sometimes it's kind of opposite so just be careful how you're braiding your hair and who is braiding your hair the fifth thing I want to talk about is how a lot of products tend to say that damage can be fixed with blank split ends can be repaired with blank this oil can help repair your split ends like it can't it can't like split ends are split you have to cut it off if you have a lot of split ends there's no way of repairing it you can't seal it you can't glue it back together you can't do anything like you literally have to cut it off so if you do have split ends don't waste your time don't waste your money on buying all the serums and oils and sprays and all of that just cut it so um yeah that's pretty simple I think you guys get that most of you probably know that if you don't throw all those products away and go get a trim the sixth thing I want to talk about is something that I grew up with and probably a lot of other people did as well and this is the myth of a lot of black mothers and they believe that greasing your scalp helps your hair grow greasing your scalp helps your hair grow which is a complete complete myth it depends what you are putting on your scalp obviously you should moisturize your scalp because that helps your hair grow um, healthier and it helps keep your scalp healthy because that is the beginning of your hair growth right so but the thing is that a lot of times we are greasing our hair or greasing our scalp with products that are really cheap that are full of petroleum jelly and mineral oil which are really really cheap products that usually clog our pores so if you're going to use any of those products i would recommend that you would use it for a bit of shine if you need but it's not something that you put on your scalp to help it grow let me show you guys something so a lot of you guys probably know about blue magic they have different containers like this is the blue magic organics super super sure grow so in here they have a lot of growth um, promoting ingredients but the main ingredient in this is um, the main ingredient in this is petroleum so a lot of this can clog up my pores but because it has so many other little good things people look at it and think oh this will be good this will help grow your hair but you can get these things in different forms to put on your scalp the petroleum jelly being the main ingredient can cause more damage than good like compared to all the other stuff that's in here so we kind of just need to be careful and use this sparingly I personally I still use this I use this when I braid up my hair and I just like the way it makes my hair feel and look so I'm not saying don't ever use this but don't think that this is the secret to hair growth because it's not if you really want to keep your scalp healthy and grow your hair look at things in here like let's say sunflower seed oil um, aloe juice what else is in here coconut oil jojoba oil there's all these things, there's um, green tea leaves, like everything, there's a lot of great stuff in here that like little bits and pieces of it in here or whatever, but you can get those separately and put that on your scalp because it's probably a raw fine oil that will actually absorb into your hair instead of just sitting on top and clogging your pores. So this can be a little damaging if you abuse it, but of course if you're just trying to get your braids to look a little shinier, you can use a little bit of this and it'll be fine. But don't think this is like the secret to everything like a lot of people think. Greasing your scalp isn't going to help your hair grow. The seventh myth that I want to talk about is how people believe that natural hair doesn't grow or that it grows slower than any other type of hair or any other person's hair and like if you're black your hair just doesn't grow as fast that is not the case the average um length that everyone's hair grows is about half an inch a month but all of that like if you reach that like full potential of half an inch or more that all has to do with like your insides like your health nutrition all of that and it's not that your hair cannot grow like you can make it grow you can make it reach that full potential of growing a full half an inch a month or a full inch a month or whatever everybody's different but it's not that natural hair in general does not grow or that it grows slower so if you're relaxed your hair isn't going to grow any faster than when your hair is natural it could maybe seem that way because when you're relaxed it's easier to manage your hair for you so you are able to minimize breakage and then maybe when you 
turn into being natural you're not able to manage it and you're causing a lot of breakage and it looks like your hair is not growing but it is actually growing the same speed but you have to be able to retain the length so if you want to maximize your hair growth you need to figure out how your hair grows and how you can eat or how you can make sure that your um, nutrients are up to its potential so that your hair can grow as much as possible as it can for you so being natural doesn't make your hair grow any slower it's actually the same as everybody else's hair but retaining the length is what you really have to think about okay so the last thing I want to talk about is how people believe that natural hair is stronger so technically it is not any stronger than any other kind of hair um, everybody is different everybody has different um, what's the word that they use like different like thickness and strands but natural hair is not any stronger so once you go from being relaxed to natural you don't want to start being more aggressive on your hair just because it's kinkier curly hair is prone to dryness which sometimes equals breakage so sometimes when you do go natural your hair obviously goes to its natural state of being super curly and a little bit more dry so that can actually make your hair a bit weaker because you are not able to keep it moisturized as much and keep it as strong as much from like how you're taking care of it if that makes sense so yeah if anything it might be a little more difficult to keep your hair strong just because your hair is in its natural curly state you have curly hair natural hair is like we're talking about natural curly hair and curly hair is drier so sometimes that causes breakage so don't treat it as if oh because it's tough it's actually stronger like it's not you should still treat it very gently and be um very yeah just be very gentle with your hair and kind of comb it out as gently as you can and use products that will smoothen it out and make it easier for you so then when you're taking care of it you're not causing as much breakage because your hair isn't all of a sudden stronger because you're natural you know anyways okay i hope this video made sense and i hope it's informative and that if you didn't know any of these things that you can um i guess take it in and figure it out for yourself and see if you believe in these myths or if you think they are complete BS like I do. Of course, if you think anything that I suggested is completely wrong, you can com you can totally leave comments down below and explain why you think this myth is actually true. Um, this is just my opinion, so don't freak out. I'm not telling you what to do or what not to do with your hair, but this is what I think is true. And, and I think that kind of shifting my mentality away from these myths have helped me in my natural hair journey, so I feel like other people could use that if they believe it to be true as well so yeah anyways um thank you guys so much for watching please comment down below subscribe thumbs up this video turn on the notification button so you don't miss any videos and yeah follow me on my social medias and i will see you guys in my next video bye